this is actually something that has been going on in uh, Europe for a while, uh, you know, because uh, France, Germany, Italy, uh, they obviously were a little bit ahead of the wave when, when COVID hit before the US and Canada. And there were studies, uh, actually a lot of the thick blood disorder or blood clot disorders in the setting of COVID, uh, many of them are from France, Italy, China. And uh, I was actually asked to consult on a trial even for India where they were giving patients in uh, prophylactic blood thinners. Um, so, you know, COVID, as the more we we begin to understand, I still remember the first time when, uh, you know, the outbreak happened in New York and ICU doctors were coming out and saying, you know, what is this? Like, people are on ventilators, we're giving them all the oxygen, yet, you know, it's doing nothing to them, they're still dying. And, you know, what, uh, and they, they were at that time talking about, you know, is this something like, it's like high altitude sickness, you know, where your oxygen saturations, despite, you know, getting oxygen is not enough. And that is a process called shunting. So um, there are several different different mechanisms or, or different disorders in which uh, the lungs are, are not getting enough blood. The actual amount of oxygen that goes in the blood is not uh, it, what the body or the lungs receive, basically. Um, and, and so there's always a barrier in between. Uh, sometimes that's really bad lung disease, a bad pneumonia. Um, and ARDS, which is acute respiratory distress syndrome caused by the COVID-19 virus itself is one. But then um, clots in your lungs are also one of the major cause for shunting. And so, uh, you know, it took us a while to realize that this is a thrombotic disease. And how did we actually discover that? It was actually on autopsy cases when, you know, enough people had uh, unfortunately died from COVID despite being on aggressive mechanical ventilation on autopsies, they found that, you know, their lungs were full of blood clots. And that's when we, we gain more understanding as to, you know, this is, is causing a, a clotting disorder that the COVID-19 uh, virus itself. And then the next thing led to, well, you know, what, what is driving all this coagulation cascade or thick blood, blood clotting uh, cascade? And there are many mechanisms that by now we know have been postulated as to how COVID causes this thick blood disorder. Uh, one of them is uh, causing uh, a thick blood uh, disorder in the local blood vessel itself. Um, there, another mechanism, which is a more sort of common mechanism, particularly in young patients who don't have other predisposing risk factors, is the inflammatory response and those chemicals and what we call chemokines and cytokines. There are these chemical substances released by our body to fight the COVID-19 infection, but those chemicals actually um, mess up the, the, the pathways in the cascade, which control the level of thinness in our blood. And so they lead to clotting. And then there's also evidence to suggest on autopsies again, that uh, COVID-19 virus actually eats up the, the blood vessel inner layer as well, they, they were called the endothelial layer. So, you know, by, by causing endothelial disruption and, and damage to the vessel, by causing a uh, local thrombosis and by, by increasing hypercoagulability or clotting risk by way of the inflammatory response um, are some of the mechanisms by which COVID causes uh, this, this thick blood disorder. So it would make sense that, uh, you know, thinning their blood empirically, um, particularly in sicker patients. Um, you know, there's data to suggest if you look at many of the, the French studies, they actually showed that the risk of venous blood clots in COVID patients was up to about 25% of all patients. And in patients who were uh, very sick, um, if, if it depends on what study you looked at, if you looked at studies who just uh, looked at ICU patients, which are the sicker patients, the one who are on mechanical ventilation, in them, uh, the, the risk of blood clotting was uh, up to 60 to 70% even in one study. And so, uh, yes, when they had developed those clots, similar to many patients that you know we see, uh, at that time, yes, it's, we're bound to put them on blood thinners. But the question is, can we, can we prevent this from happening to begin with and, and uh, save them you know, getting onto mechanical ventilation if we can prevent that clotting in the lungs and elsewhere? Um, and so there are many studies that are actually ongoing. Uh, thus far, most of the studies are what we call observational studies. They're not randomized. Um, but uh, there are ongoing studies trying to look at this. But yes, a lot of retrospective studies are now showing because now we have 
almost what 10 months 10 to 12 months of data now um, uh, of COVID patients and so data studies in retrospect have now observationally shown that uh, there is a, a high clotting risk and then there are some countries who are giving their patients prophylactic blood thinners so it makes it makes complete sense that we're you know we treat these patients uh, as a very high risk clotting disorder patients now it, whether or not you know one could say is it that the sicker patients are the ones we're going to get more blood clots and the non-sick ones aren't we do know for a fact that the ones who are sicker are going to get more blood clots but the ones that are not very sick either they are also developing new blood clots so there must be something in in these patients you know um, genetic makeup or, or some environmental stimulus something that is inherent to those patients uh, something about their coagulation or clotting cascade that gets um, get, gets gets aggravated and, and causes this clotting disorder. I mean, I can show you patients in my practice who have had mild disease, very mild disease, never needed intubation, and just were admitted to the hospital with a mild pneumonia for two three days, and you know five days later they develop a blood clot. So it's we haven't been able to fully predict who gets a blood clot, who doesn't, but the the prevalence uh, or now the incidence of of blood clots is so much that uh, there is consensus um, in, in several patients, particularly the sicker patients, to put them on prophylactic blood thinners. There are no guidelines for this, right? We are creating guidelines based, based on the patients that we're now seeing. Um, but I think the practice will gear towards uh, gradually, uh, if we have enough data to show that the benefits of putting these people on empiric blood thinners uh, it outweighs those risks that may become a common practice. But I have seen patients even uh, two to three weeks after their COVID illness has resolved, come in with blood clots in either, either the arteries of the brain causing an ischemic arterial stroke or in the veins of the brain causing you know, a venous sinus thrombosis. And even though he was the first case that we identified here at the Cleveland Clinic, uh, after that, I've seen another two more cases of just venous sinus thrombosis. And uh, you know the, the intriguing part is I've even seen patients now, two patients who were on standard blood thinners that was, you know, they had uh, a known uh, abnormal heart rhythm called atrial fibrillation or an underlying uh, disorder which they had recurrent clots, but were very well controlled on Coumadin, for example, and their blood was, was accurately thinned. But just because they had a COVID infection in the recent days and likely had this inflammatory response, that adequate blood thinner was no longer adequate during this inflammatory response, um, which which was very striking. And we're we're getting to since we've gathered two cases now, that's something we'll also be publishing soon as well. But it is striking that the hypercoagulability or this clotting disorder that COVID causes, uh, you know, is is so uh, striking and, and oftentimes can be so severe that uh, there's no guarantee that you know your your standard blood thinner is is still going to work signs of a blood clot are going to be shortness of breath um, increased heart rate uh, and uh, difficulty breathing uh, those are going to be uh, the the what we call pulmonary embolism or clot in the lung signs um, for clots for example you know you develop sudden onset leg pain or calf pain or swelling um, in the you know first few weeks after COVID, if you develop uh, a headache at, in the middle of nowhere that is very atypical, uh, you know again there's no such thing as if it's a stabbing headache or not. If it's a bad headache that is progressive, and you you know you took your conventional Tylenol or ibuprofen and it didn't get better, these are all things to seek immediate medical attention for. And obviously any signs of an ischemic stroke, uh, you know, uh, facial droop. Uh, inability to speak, arm weakness, uh, gaze deviation, uh, an extremity becoming limp, or you know, an arm or leg, you, you lose sensation, uh, or the inability to speak or walk, all these signs, uh, you know, should, should be taken very seriously and immediate medical attention should be sought.